Hello and welcome to another FreeCAD tutorial with me, Andrew. Today I'm going to be showing you something new to 0 0.19 and I only stumbled across it while researching another video. It's the additive and subtractive helix within the part design workbench. I'm going to go over a few examples of the two and hopefully add a new tool to your CAD toolkit. So as you can see, I'm obviously in the part design workbench and I've got myself a simple sketch which I've created in the XZ workplane. If I double click on the sketch, you can see all the constraints that I've constrained my geometry to. Now how I've offset this by 20 mil in the Y, and notice how I've offset it 10 mil in the X. This is important, especially if these are our rotation points, and we're trying to wrap our sketch around a piece of geometry. If I close out of that, and with our sketch selected, I can click on the additive helix, which can be found up here on our tool ribbon, and is labeled as sweep a selected sketch along a helix. If I click on that, you'll see how our geometry has now been swept in a helix. We have a few options to choose from our parameters box, and as you can see in our axis, our sketch is currently being helixed around our vertical datum point. If I click on that drop down and set it to horizontal sketch axis, you'll see how our geometry changes. Now this may look a little bit buggy, and that's due to the pitch that we have set. I'll come back to mode in just a moment when I've gone through the pitch and the height, and for now I'm gonna set the pitch to 20 mil. So the pitch is 20 mil from this point to this point. If I was to set this to 15, because in our sketch our rectangle was set to 15 mil wide, you'll see how they both touch each other. If I set that back to 20, and I can set my height to something like 100, and you'll see how we get multiple turns on that. And that leads us into the mode. So as you can see, pitch and height, which is what we've just set here. If I click on the drop down, we've got three options. So pitch and height, pitch turns, and height and turns. So if I click on pitch and turns, you'll see we still have 20 millimeters, which I've already set, and the turns are free. So that's three full 360 degree turns. If I set that down to one, you'll see this like so. If I was to put this up to say 10, you'll see we now have 10 turns. So if I now go back over to our mode dropdown and I set it to height and turns, you'll see how we now have height rather than pitch. Now if we divide this 200 by the 10 turns, that gives us our 20 millimeter pitch. So if I was to change these turns just down to one, you'll see that between these two points, that's a 200 mil pitch. And again, if I set that back to 10 and set this to 100, that is actually a 10 millimeter pitch. So what I'm gonna do is here, I'm just going to set this back to 200 and I'm gonna set our turns to five. Our cone angle is the angle at which our helix will taper out at. So if I set our cone angle to 10 degrees, you see how our helix is now tapered out. And that's 10 degrees from this point here to this point here, not from the center line. You can also put it into reverse, so you could put a minus, but just remember this could potentially affect your geometry depending on how you've drawn it. So if I click on that now, you'll see how it's totally messed up what I've created. If I just set it to minus one degree, the taper is now going in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna set that back to zero, and you'll see we also have left-handed and reverse. Left-handed just gives us a left-handed helix compared to the original right-handed one, and reverse, instead of going positive in the X, it will now go negative in the X. If I say okay to that, as you can see, we now have additive helix added to our model tree, and if we double click on that, we can edit everything that we've just set. So let's say I don't want it left-handed, and maybe I don't want it reversed, and I can say OK. You can also edit this just by clicking on the additive helix, and you'll see that our parameters are also added down here. So let's say I want to set the height to 100. You'll see that the height now changes. So moving on to my next example, I have here a simple polygon, which is just in the center of our plane, and we've got a 25mm radius to it. If I have our sketch selected, I click on the additive helix, set it around our center point, which is the Z, and you can see how it helixes up. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set the height to 100, and I'm gonna set the pitch to 300. And you'll see that we get this vase sort of shape. Now, when I first set the cone angle to 10 degrees, I was sort of hoping that it would taper outwards, but actually instead, it does this sort of bendy over sort of shape. 
which is absolutely fine if that's what you're looking for. But in this case, I'm just going to set it back to zero. I'm going to say OK to that. And for this, I'm just going to shell it. So I'm going to click on the top face here and click on the shell icon. And as you can see, it shells our shape perfectly fine with no problems at all. Moving on to the third example of our additive helix, you'll see here I've got myself a simple 20 diameter cylinder, which is about 100 mil long. You'll also see here I've set up a sketch here, which is 10 mil and 10 mil off of our center point, 10 mil in height and 5 mil in width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of that, our sketch is highlighted, and I'm going to click on our additive helix, and you'll see what happens. If I set this on our X axis, you'll see how the shape doesn't actually conform to our cylinder. I'm not entirely sure why this is, I'm guessing it's a slight little bug, but that can be easily fixed. So I'm going to cancel that, go on to our sketch, I'm going to set this to say 9.9mm. I'm then going to close out of that, our sketch is highlighted, add to Felix, set it along our X point, and as you can see, it now works perfectly fine. I'm not entirely sure why this is, but it's only a tiny little bug, which hopefully won't affect our geometry too much. Now another thing we can do is we can cancel out of that, and go back onto our sketch, and let's say I want this to be minus 10. And what I can do is I can close out of that, sketch selected, additive helix, along our X point, and as you can see it can overhang our actual main geometry. If I then set this to reversed, you'll see how it disappears because it's not connecting the main geometry. Another random error that occurred, so if I've got my sketch here, it's the same cylinder, and we've just added ourselves a little circle on top to create our helix. Click on the additive helix, click on the x-axis, and you'll see how it creates this sort of random geometry. I can only assume that it's the same as the last time, where it's only just touching our piece of geometry. If I increase this, say 100, you can see how it totally goes haywire, and it doesn't really know what it wants to do. If I again cancel out of that, go onto our sketch, set that to 12 mil, so it's 0.5 into our geometry, close out of that, click on our sketch, add to Felix, along the x-axis, and you'll see that it works absolutely fine. Again, setting this to 100 mil gives us the geometry that I've input. Now we're going to be moving on to the subtractive helix, and the tool icon can be found up here on our tool ribbon. This is named Sweep a Selected Sketch Along a Helix and Remove It from the Body. Basically, it's like a grooving tool, but with a helix motion. So here I've set up a simple half cube with a hole going through the centre, two chamfers on either end. It's sort of mimicking a sectioned view of a threaded hole. If I turn on our origin point, you'll see how we're off centre, which means if I rotated it around our Z origin point, it wouldn't give us the geometry we're looking for. If I try to do that by selecting our sketch, click on our subtractive helix, you'll see that it goes around our centre point and doesn't give us the geometry that we actually want. So I've set myself up this datum line, which is in the centre of our hole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to our axis, select reference, and click on our datum point. Now you notice that our part disappears. And I'll admit this is slightly annoying because you probably want to know what's actually happening to our piece of geometry. So if I just put in a couple of parameters here, and say 50 mil, it will go upwards. I will reverse that, so it's going into our job hopefully. I can say OK to that, and you'll see that it's helix into our job. Now I've also noticed that it's actually not gone all the way to the edge. So we can double click onto our subtractive helix and manipulate that to how we want it. Equally, we can just highlight our subtractive helix and set our height to say 60. As you can see, this now clears up what I wanted. So this example is basically the same as what I just showed you. I'm going to click on our sketch, click on the subtractive helix, click on our x-axis, and I'm going to set the height to 100. You'll see how our geometry also disappears here, and how our parameters box is basically exactly the same as the additive helix, apart from this little tick box down here, which is remove outside of profile. What I'm going to do is quickly is press OK, and just show you what geometry this creates on its own. And as you can see, we've created a helix around this cylinder. If I double click back onto the subtractive helix, and select the tick box, remove outside of profile, 
you'll see that nothing really changes. However, if I press OK, you'll see how instead of grooving our actual part, it basically takes away the rest of the part and leaves us with the groove. So it sort of inverts our cut in a sense. If you wanted to create a piece of geometry like this, you could just probably use the additive helix. But maybe you want to create something that's slightly more complex and that you can't use the additive helix. That application is entirely down to you. Personally, I think this is a great addition to the FreeCAD software. I know originally we could create a helix within the part workbench and then sweep a sketch along that path, but this just makes creating so much easier. We can manipulate our helix easily with the parameters box, allowing us to visualize our geometry and make alterations. There's a few little buggy bits that I showed, but I have no doubt that these will be patched, but it's also not a big deal, as we can get around them with minimal hassle. Do you think this could help new users in the quest for creating parts? Or perhaps you'd love doing it the long-handed way? Let me know in the comments below what you think of these tools. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you disliked it, give it a thumbs down, and consider subscribing for more content. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and as always, have an epic weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.